What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Drew Cameron. Welcome back to another Unload Session, where I talk about life, business, and everything in between from my viewpoint as a father. So, topic today is gonna be living above your means. So when you live above, live above your means, you put yourself in a situation where you can't be free and you put your, um, your livelihood, you put your whole makeup, whoever it is that you are, you put a heavy burden on yourself. Now, I think I've discussed this before. If you've been following my channel for a while, I'm a realtor by trade, right? And I get calls from time to time of past clients and clients who want to buy a house or they have questions or whatever. And one of the things I do, and they probably think I'm trying to talk them out about a house is I go deep into why, like, why are you trying to buy this house? And, you know, a lot of times their, their whys are, they're superficial, they're not really deep, you know, and it's, it's a lot of impulse, right? But it's not my job to talk them out of it. I just do the work to lay the foundation of what's actually being discussed, like why you want to move. And a lot of times, you know, we live in America, we live in a society where, you know, debt isn't looked at as a bad thing, but all debt is bad. Even the so-called good debt for a business or, you know, everybody that tells you, oh, if you got, you know, multiple assets, you know, and you're paying on them, meaning like a, a, a property or, you know, uh, credit cards, you know, because you're using them for business. At the end of the day, it's still debt. Now, if you're assets to liabilities, and, and this is not about that, but if, you're, if your assets to liabilities like outweigh one another, then I can see like on paper, when you, if you sell everything, if you make everything liquid, you know, at the end of the day, if you're gonna be above or you're gonna, be, or you're gonna break even, I get it, right, I get it. But understanding that when I'm on these calls, it's like, okay, so where are you at money-wise? And they're like, well, you know, I got, three car notes, you know, we're, we're so many thousand dollars in credit card debt and we want to go buy this five, 500, $400,000, $800,000 house. And it's, okay, you already have a house, right? Correct. So why do you want this? Oh, well, my wife saw this and we really like this house and, uh, and blah, blah, blah. And and I hear and I listen to these men, sometimes women, but I listen to these men and I've been there, right? So it's, it, it is judgment, but it's judgment based off accountability and wanting to hold people accountable. But again, like I said, with, with holding a real estate license and having a certain level of respect to hold in that regards and not put my opinion too much on them. Um, unless they act. Now, if they ask, I give it straight to straight to them. Like, well, you know, look, you, you guys don't have any other goals, other other priorities, you know. Um, but you know, people want what they want. But it got me to thinking, and I, I did another video, I think, the other day about being content and never settling. Now, being content and never settling, you know, when you think about it, um, I remember at one point, you know, like I said, when I was younger, I worked three jobs. Right, I worked at three jobs and I barely got any sleep, but I had a nice car. I had, um, you know, nice jewelry. Um, we were wearing, I think, jerseys, pro models, you know what I mean? Uh, I had all the things, all the things, right? And I, I, I think in a sense, I felt good. I was happy, you know, overall, but it was more or less, I was happy because I was accomplishing goals, right? I was accomplishing, getting what I wanted, attaining what I want, right? And as you get older, you get, you get a deeper understanding of who you are. And so it's not to say that having a nice house, having, a, having the things you want, but you gotta understand it's a way to do it, right? And you should never put yourself in a situation where you can be controlled. And what I mean by control is your things are controlling you because you don't want to lose them, right? So if you don't want to lose things, you're going to do whatever it takes to keep those things. 
And if you have a family, now I'm speaking to family men. I'm not talking to you single people. I'm not talking to men and women who are just married and maybe don't have any kids, but I am speaking to you because this is something to think about. When you get to a place where you have all those things and now you have to decide if you're about to go to, you know what I'm saying, juniors football game or go pick up, you know what I'm saying, um, your daughter from school because it's her birthday and you wanted to get out of school early and do something special with her. And then you're like, well, no, I got to go. I got to go to work. I don't have any time off. I can't do this. I can't do this because I need these hours or whatever the case may be. These are all real life situations. So when you start thinking about what does your real um, rich life, what does really looking at who you are and what you want in life mean, you gotta start asking yourself those questions. So as a man who has done that, like I said, been there, done that, worked three, four, two, or three jobs at one time, um, you know, hustled to make as much money as possible to give his family everything, um, more or less monetarily, um, physical, in a materialistic way, by all means, go and get it. Go get what you want, go do what you want, but you need to sit down and do a deep dig into your why. Why do you want to do these things? Why do you want, after you just bought a house two years ago, why do you really want to move to another house? You know, and people don't think they're and ask those real questions. Like, why do I want to do this? And people make up excuses. Oh, I want to move because the HOA. Or I want to move because my friend, they just bought a house. And I love this. And I love that about the house. But when you bought this house two years ago, you was happy. So why do you want to change now? It, you know, if you if you really dig deep, it, it goes deeper than that. Like I told you, I literally bought two cars. I literally bought a whole nother house. I literally spent all my time working, working, working. And all my wife wanted was more quality time, more vacations. But I didn't sit down. I wanted to be goofy. I wanted to be naive. I wanted to not have the hard conversations to figure out what, what it is that we really were working towards. So... It's, it's really just something to think about. It's really just something when, you, when you've when gone from being the person who everybody looks at, oh, you guys have this, you guys have that. Da, 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 da. And a lot of people chase that too. You know, you get the accolades from everybody around you and everybody telling you, you are the Joneses, right? You are the Joneses and that you should be feeling some kind of happiness or some kind of uh, triumph, some kind of trophy because you are the people that want, people want to be but in actuality, when you sit down, it's like, that's not really what I want. You know what I mean? At one point in my life, it was like, I wanted to own my own gym, right? I want to own my own gym. I wanted to have a nice car. And I wanted to do what I want when I wanted to do it. But I chased all this other stuff before I even got there. You know what I mean? Now I got the gym I want, you know what I mean? Because I really dug deep into the why. You know what I mean? Like I was literally signing a contract. I was going to sign a contract with 24 hour fitness to own one of them. And I still will one day, mark my word, watch the video. I still will own a 24 hour anytime fitness gym. But at the time, I wanted that for the freedom that I believed it would, be, it would bring me. But now I have a smaller, smaller gym on the smaller scale where I still can't help clients and do that. Still got a nice car I can ride around and I'm free to do what I want. I also do real estate. And this is not a plug. This is just saying like I started understanding my priorities understanding my standards of life and living and what I wanted. And so when you do that, you stop chasing all these other things and you stop trying to keep up with the Joneses. You stop trying to more or less think that you have to gain some kind of accomplishment that gives you a pat on the back from the world where the world, don't, they don't care what you got going on. You are a, a consumer in the machine and keeps it rolling, keeps it moving. You know, the system is designed to keep us spending, 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 buying, 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 going, 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 never having the time to think, you know. So when you start removing the burdens from your life, you're able to think clear, you're able to decide what it is you really want in your life. So that's my tangent for today. 
I just wanted to make sure I told y'all, you know, do not live above your means. You know, men, fathers, leaders of your house, do not live above your means by, by any case. Stay down, stay relentless, stay focused on what it is you need to accomplish and understand your deep why. Talk to your family and make sure that you know exactly what it is that you're wanting out of life and make sure that you're not chasing the next shiny object. So the road ahead is long and hard. No place for the weak. You must be a warrior. Attack the death.